Okay, this is going to be a two-part review. Um, I got two things I'm going to be reviewing. Um, a couple of these, both of them I've been using for, oh, one for at least four, actually going on my fifth year using, and the other one going on my first year of actually using. Um, today I'll be bringing to you the Bug Out Gear Coyote Tan Backpack and the Smith & Wesson HRT. Alright, let's go with the HRT first. I got this in at Fort Guernsey, Wyoming at, a, at one of their PX, their post exchange. Uh, it wasn't run by APHES or anything, it was just a private sector uh, post exchange. <clears throat> so I didn't pay too much for this. It was probably around retail, around 35 bucks. Um, I do like it. Uh, I do carry it around. Um, I have to be careful around where I live to carry it around, unless I'm in uniform, um, because it is not the front assisted blade, and some of the state laws uh, per would prohibit me to carry this unless I have my military ID and have my uniform on. Um, probably wouldn't be questioned after that fact. But so far, I've had this for almost over a year, and it's uh, holding up pretty nice. Uh, there's a few wear marks here and there from being in my pocket, going on, you know, countertops. Uh, brushing up when it's in my pocket onto uh, other materials, and I mean that's not really a big deal. That's gonna happen. You always come back, take this off, and dura coat it, or um, you know, or just leave it the way it is. Um, sometimes they end up looking a little cooler when they get a little bit of a uh, scarring done to them. Um, so we'll go from the top to the bottom of this. So here's the top of where the knife comes out. And Smith & Wesson did an awesome job at making this form fit your hand. You have nice jimping on either side of the blade. A nice little finger choil that is also ambidextrous. So if you flip it to the other side, you're going to have the same finger choil. Because the blade comes out right there. And it's, and it's going to be facing the right way. you got nice jimping, a nice purchase there, a nice purchase there. And they did a little bit of a fancy uh, uh, engraving. You got the SW, and this is actually functional. Um, how you say? Um, not jimping, but it's a functional texturing. So it is. It is really grippy both ways. It's just sharp enough that it, you can snag your gloves or your fingers on, and you won't. It won't slip out of your hand. And then they have a nice deep pocket clip. I wish it was a little bit taller. Maybe if it was bent over underneath the window breaker. It would be a little nice. And then you get a nice little lanyard hold. Um, I don't put a lanyard on this. I don't see the need to. Um, I may in the future. Who knows. Um, okay, and then you got the lock back here. Which, what you have in your pocket, I do suggest you keep it locked. Because this can get pushed open. And you don't want this popping out in your pocket and cutting your pant pocket open or cutting your thigh. So, we'll go to opening the knife. So what you do, you pull down the lock. And then, you just give slight pressure and it pops right out. It's got awesome blade lockup. And this one is the half plain edge, half serrated Tonto blade. Uh, you can get this. You can get this uh, hair popping, laughing sharp, to where you just touch a little piece of your hair and it just pops right off your skin. It is sharpened only on one side with the ground. Um, I tend to use the work sharp sharpener that my buddy has, um, and it does a nice job on it. Never have to touch up the uh, serrations. I'm only touch. I only touch up the uh, tip of the blade and the actual in the actual blade itself. Um, I do believe I did and you can tell a little bit here I did kinda nick and break off the tip a little bit but you can barely notice it because that that tip comes so far up on the spine of the blade that it's not really that fragile. Um, I mean you can't be shouldn't be stabbing into walls with this or anything but if you do hit something hard, it will chip a little bit, but it won't break the whole knife. 
Um, just a little bit of sharpening is what I did and brought back to a good edge. And actually the the uh, tip of the blade is actually a lot stronger now because that little thin piece of metal that was the tip did get, did get snapped off. So it actually made it a better, a better functioning blade. And we'll give you a good look at this. Um, it's got a little bit of wear on it. I do use it. And I do have it out. We'll give you the product code number on here. I do believe they have it on here. Let me see if I can see that. Okay, so you got the SW OTF, which stands for out the front. And that's going to be two, two Tango Bravo Sierra. Let me focus that in for you. So in case you're looking for it. My only gripe with this knife, and it's not anything in this whole package, my only gripe with it, or my only two gripes really, is this, unless you get used to it, this can be a hassle to try in one hand close. You have to get really used to this little uh, lever and locking mechanism, so you can swipe it down. But the bigger point is my glass breaker, or skull crusher, whatever you want to call it. Um, this does make a good impact impact weapon. You don't even have to have it deploy. You can hit somebody with this or on the on the broad side of that and still do some damage and have a loaded fist at the same time. But this piece right here, I guess if I would put some Loctite on it and then got a wrench that size, it wouldn't be such of a big deal. And maybe it's just this one. I'm not sure. And it is nice that it does come off because you can replace it. But this tends, over time, to loosen up. Now, it hasn't loosened up to the point where it falls off on me. But it loosens up enough that you can tell that it's jiggling around. And if you don't tighten it back by hand, um, you will lose it. And uh, I don't want to lose that because I don't want to buy a new one. So I might go get some, uh, some Loctite and cinch that down a little bit better. And make that work a little bit better in my favor. Um, and I guess if you are a lefty, the one drawback is for you guys. Um, this is only one side pocket clip carry. Um, obviously, because they don't have the switch and lever on this on the spine of the uh, handle, it's on the broad side of it, and that takes up the real estate of where you would have a pocket clip. But that doesn't mean you can't put it in reverse side this way and pull it out and give it a quick flip. I mean, that's not a big deal either. Um, if you're a lefty, you might want to think about that. But overall, I mean, I got this more of the secondary kind of cool. Um, it was a decent price. And it's a nice little utility knife just to, you know, if I need to open a package or open up a bag it's there and it will work and if I do need it for self-defense um, it's quick deploying and it will help me get out of that situation never had to use it hope I never do but anyways now for my five-year review on this this is my uh, bug out gear uh, book bag and it's in coyote tan this is the I believe the medium size. I do have a larger one, an XL. I believe this is the large. Just a little bit bigger than the medium. Um, it's got awesome storage. Um, my only big gripe is when I do put uniforms in here, I can pretty much only put my uniforms and boots in here, and uh, maybe a laptop in one section, and then I can dress out the rest of it the way I want. But uh, I've had this for five years. I got it down in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and it does have Molly on the back. So if I did want to put some pouches right here, it'd be nice um, to do so. Uh, I don't see myself doing that because it's put on this flap, and it makes it make this pocket sag. But that's the other nice thing. You got this pocket right here, right in front. So you know you can put your Pi Pro, your Pro, um, maybe a little pistol. Or you can put a little pistol right there in this slot. I put my sunglasses up here. And I've been using this for a couple weeks. 
and uh, the last couple weeks to go back and forth to my armory. And I've been putting my workout clothes in here, I've been putting my uniform in here, my laptop, a couple of electronics, and it is separated nicely. So you got this little pocket in the front. You put, you know, a little miscellaneous stuff. I wish they did have a little bit more uh, molly, molly webbing, uh, maybe around the bag too, maybe get some more options. And then you got this little zipper pouch that comes from here. Actually, it goes up to here, so you can fit a pretty good large notebook if you wanted to in there. But it goes up underneath the Velcro. And I suppose if you had a piece of uh, ceramic armor that was uh, small enough for this, you could possibly fit it in here and have armor on the back of this. But there is room in the inside if you wanted to save yourself some some weight on your vest and say you're going to be carrying this a lot there is room for an armor plate for a camelback system in here or even a radio some kind of radio mechanism because over here you have I can't tell if you can see that or not but you have a little hole right here that you can put either your camelback straw out of or some kind of radio equipment headphones and you got some tie down straps here you can put carabiner clips on and, and run your wires so that way but onto the second uh, the third pouch here this is the I would say the third to the it's the third to the main pouch the bigger compartment um, here you can you got a little bit of an admin pouch um, you got a mesh mesh pocket where you can put your loose change or whatever you need to be able to see and know you have it there. Um, these are big enough for little admin cards, um, maybe a nine line or something you might need to get to handy real quick. And then this pocket is big enough for a wallet or a passport. Um, this is probably big enough for a little bit of a bigger flashlight, uh, maybe some temp sticks. And the same on that side. Um, you can put a cell phone, a camera, what have you in there, um, chem lights, uh, uh, your MRE spoon, and then here you have a Velcro closure where you have another open pouch in the back, and this would be good for either, I guess, anything book size, a small book size, and maybe a thin profile, uh, an iPad, some kind of tablet, you could probably put right there if you really wanted to. And then we'll go to the second, to the main pouch. I'm sorry, I gotta do this one here. Now. It's not too easy. And we got the main pouch. See, something like this I could put. Something like this I could put right here in this pouch and it would stay there. But we got this pouch right here with more mesh pockets. I got some MRE stuff in here. Um, that seems to be the exit for that. But you got more mesh pockets right here. Um, I found that I put either my multi-tool right here in one of these sometimes. Or maybe an extra spare pistol mag. But whatever you can, you know, think you can want put in there. Uh, you can attach in there. And it will work great. Um, here's another, I guess I'd call it another change pouch. Maybe electronic batteries or anything you might want to be able to see right away. And then you got right here some more enclosed uh, pouches that have uh, elastic on the top again. And I mean, use your imagination. You can put a couple extra knives in there if you needed to carry them around. Um, if you have a camcorder, any electronic wires that are small, battery charger for your phone. Those cords can handily or can fit right in there. Flashlights. I put flashlights in this one. Uh, I got a small girder one. Um, then on the back side, I'm going to put it through this. And this does come all the way down and it has the elastic so it won't completely fall open on you. But you got some more pouches here. And these are enclosed. These are ones that. I don't really put anything in because I end up, I don't have anything that I would want to put in these, and I'd forget 
where I put stuff if I put them in these, unless it was something that I rarely used or I knew I was going to use right away. And we'll flip this back around. And then you got a nice, and it's, it's a little bit of padded, a um, little bit of padding. But you can put your radio in there, a little walkie talkie, your phone, or camcorder in this pouch. And it's a little bit more padded in this section than it would be in the outer sections because you're sandwiched in between a few layers. So you're not going to worry about banging up your camera, your phone, or your radio. And then the simple part is the big pouch. Um, not much to say about this. Um, this material here is more water repellent resistant. Um, so because you do put your camel back back here if you wanted to. So they made it to where it wouldn't be soaking in and absorbing water to your other compartments. Um, this is more of a, a canvas material and this is more of a uh, plastic covering on the back. Um, if you do put your laptop back here, I wouldn't put a camel back back here at all because this is the only piece of material protecting you from protecting your laptop from your camel back. So I wouldn't suggest that. But if you're going to put any electronics back here, books, um, it makes a good book bag too. Keep that in mind. I've used it a couple times. I've seen a lot of people use them for book bags. And they work awesome. And then you got, you know, your fast clips right here. So you can cinch everything down so it's not bouncing down when you're walking around or taking a hike. And on the back, I, I had the straps removed, but you have a waist strap. And then you have the sternum strap. Uh, this comes in handy for me when I'm cycling on this. That way I can have it up on my shoulder and close to my body so it's not flopping around on me. And then you got some D-rings if you want to put a carabiner with your keys on or a flashlight or a whistle on either side. And you got kind of like a poly, kind of like a molly strap, strap in here to where you can lace your camel back, your wires, your headphones, or anything else you might through these holes here, or run them through here, through the top. And that pretty much goes, that's the end of that. Um, it's been a good book bag. I'm probably going to get rid of this pretty soon. It's starting to get its wear and tear here. Um, just getting snagged, um, sweats eating away at the material a little bit. Um, just the friction and sweat and I mean I've had it for five years so I've gotten pretty good use out of it. The only drawbacks I would say is it is a little bit of a floppier bag. It's not real sturdy and it doesn't have a dedicated laptop pouch um, like my North Face. Um, I'll give you a review on that and I've been really impressed with the North Face book bag I have. I'm deciding if I want to get another one, if I want to keep that one, if I want to go with an Oakley bag for this year, um, but more on the North Face later. This doesn't have a padded pouch with any type of padding in it for a laptop, so I do put my laptop in here, but I put it in a external case, a soft case, to protect it when it's in here. And the only other drawback would be, and I have replaced a couple of these, and I ran out of 550 cord. But these tabs, this is 550 cord, and it needs to be replaced again too because it's starting to see its few better days. But when you get it originally, it just has this little shoestring style, um, I guess it's zipper tabs, which, like on here, they fray pretty easily. I cut this one off, but they start to fray pretty easily compared to 550 cord. And they snag, and they tear apart, and they break. Um, you can't, as, I, as much as I tried, you can't melt them like you can 550 cord to close them up. Like with 550 cord, if you put the two cords together or even just heat the knot up, it heats this whole knot up and it will never come off until you use a knife to cut it off. These ones, not so much. You actually burn. It's like a wick. It will burn. It will keep burning. It doesn't get real hard plastic. It does keep it from fraying up as much, but... It doesn't keep it to last. Um, I would actually, if you were to get a bug out bag, I don't know if the new ones have 550 cord, but definitely put five, replace these with 550 cord um, or some kind of bungee cord because these do not 
Um, they don't stay in place for one, and they're not really the, the best uh, pull tabs I've ever had. But other than that, it's a great bag. It's got a lot of real estate. They have a bigger size, like I said, um, where you can fit a lot more gear in it. And um, eventually, this one's just going to turn into what it is supposed to be. It's going to be a, just a regular bug out bag with a you know emergency kit, um, maybe a couple boxes of ammo, a couple of knives I don't carry around all the time. And maybe a couple packs of MREs that I have left over from manual training. And just in case it's a you know a grab and go kind of bag. Um you can't put name tapes. I put my old unit patch on here and my uh Coyote Tan American flag. You can put your name on there, you can put whatever you need. And uh, I think this cost me at the surplus store or at the uh PFs. Um about fifty bucks. Um this style might be lower if you find it on eBay now. But just uh, take a look at the PX website at APS.com or just go out to uh, Bug Out Gear and look out the, look for the Bug Out bag. They come in also different colors. They have sage, they have coyote tan, they have desert tan, um, and black. I'm sure they have ACU and multi-cam by now, and they might have even have woodland still. So that's it for today, and I'll give you a new review, hopefully sometime this week and maybe I'll do a vlog. Alright, have a good day. Subscribe and like.